Hello everyone, welcome to Game Warp. I'm Kim and joined with me as always is my co-host and partner in crime, Elwood Jones. How are you, Elwood? Hello, Kim. I'm fine. Uh, it's been a ridiculously fun week of gaming to the least. And uh, of course, we obviously cannot really go any further without obviously saying happy friend anniversary to ourselves because we're now officially one year into Game Warp, the Game Warp process now. We've been at this for a year and... Uh, I'm really excited about this game because I think this is almost like too perfectly planning that we look at this game on uh, our one year anniversary, really. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to need you to elaborate on that a little later. But uh, joined with us today is a movie blogger and also an avid gamer behind the scenes, and also is my ultimate 80s and 90s blogathon co host, Drew from Drew's Movie Reviews. Hi, Drew. How's it going? Hey, Kim. Hey, Edwin. How are you guys doing? I'm doing pretty well. So today we're looking at um, the April featured game, which Drew suggested to us um, as we transform into a luchador to kick some skeleton ass in Guacamole Super Turbo Championship Edition. Yes, um, certainly one of the games out there, which is something you shouldn't attempt after a couple of drinks. Um, Guacamole is a Metroidvania game. It was released first of all back in way back in uh, 2013. Uh, this is actually the updated version, which gives you all the DLC. Uh, the game itself sees you take control of Duan, who is just a humble farmer who is in love with El Presidente's daughter. When an evil Charles Gerson named Carlos Carlata attacks a village and kidnaps. El Presidente's daughter and Juan is in the process killed by Carlos and he ends up in the land of the dead and he's basically given the given the powers of this lucha libre mass which uh, brings him back and he's basically required to battle his way through the land of the dead in order to rescue, rescue El Presidente's daughter. This is a super fun and colourful uh, Metroidvania game as you see you battle your way through various skeleton foes um, as well as doing various platform and just generally exploring it's as you said this is just a a lot of fun it's very colorful it's very bright and uh, yeah this is certainly a, a big change of place from everything that we've been looking at up until this point so uh, yeah this was uh, certainly an exciting one to uh, go into but uh, Kim what's your opening thoughts on this one? Well, no, I mean, the, the best part about this game is definitely the story and the dialogue. I think it's so fun and so intriguing. And, like, it, it's, I guess there's, like, a quirk to it. And it's kind of cartoony. And there's a lot of personality with every single character. And it just makes you really want to go, go like, continue playing the game, no matter how hard it is, which we're going to talk about that later, obviously. Um, so, Drew, what are your thoughts? I thought it was really enjoyable. Um, I really liked the, like, how bright and colorful it was. Uh, this really got me into it. And kind of like what you said too, like I, I found myself losing time playing this game. Cause I was like, All right, I'll just play for a little bit longer. I went through a little bit level. I, I want to do this one thing first real quick, a little bit longer. And the next thing I know, it's a couple hours later. I'm like, oh, I should probably put this down now. It's because it's got such a old school style to it, as well as just a general, the whole play style to it is so very much old school. Um, it's easy to get lost into. This isn't a particularly difficult game to pick up the controls for. There's basically you have your general punches and kicks as well as throws. And um, it's, as it goes on, you can pick up different abilities. Uh, there's different grapples you can pick up as well as special moves such as like a headbutt and uppercut um, as well as the ability to turn yourself into a chicken at one point which also comes in bizarrely handy how did we all find the sort of control system for this game i would have to say i probably found it the hardest mostly because i'm still really new to the xbox controller and that was what i was using and i i don't know i got like really confused sometimes i would press the a button or the b button and mix them up and in battle that's 
really frustrating because you think you're doing something and you're not and something else happens and then you die and then as it gets harder it gets really complicated yeah like i didn't have a too big of a problem with it um like there were a couple of times when i, I switched the buttons around for the elves uh because because uh, because because of one other game that i play so like i'd be in the middle of a fight and then all of a sudden i, I would be a chicken yeah. which in the middle of a fight that's no good so, like, besides that a couple of times, it's, I found the controls pretty, to be pretty easy to pick up and, and handle. Because it plays very much like one of those classic platformers, like a, you know, like, like a Metroid, which is, I'm sure, what this was going for. And, and uh, so I, it was very easy for me to just pick it up and go. Yeah, I have to agree. I actually had similar issues um, where I didn't change any of the buttons, but I had this tendency of, rest, uh, of pressing the um, right shoulder pattern or a right shoulder button and it was just and it would just dimension swap and when you're doing like platforming parts where it is about dimension swapping really like intricately it was so frustrating but i think this really brings out the point that this game really um makes it that it's really on you on how you play the game and your frustrations are because kind of of what you're not doing right and in many ways that you, it, it, it kind of makes you keep going on and there's like this really great satisfaction to finishing a part that's really, really challenging to do. Yeah, there's definitely a sense of satisfaction in, in beating a particular challenge in, in part. Um, and by the same note, though, there is a couple of the controls which do feel a little bit broken. Um, the headbutt mechanic in particular um, was particularly frustrating as I lost track of the amount of times that I was there trying to pull off the headbutt and it just wasn't happening compared to like the the frog splash or doing the uppercut, which were really responsive. So the fact that they built it into the game, the fact that when you get later into it and you have enemies appearing in colored shields that can be broken by performing all these special moves, it was just an absolute pain when you are being mobbed by enemies and the one you need to kill requires you to do the headbutt and it's just not giving you the headbutt, it's just throwing regular punches out there. So that was a, a little bit frustrating, much like the middle section of this game where you essentially have to walk half the map to get back to to the start but because you're on a different plane because you can switch between the plane of the dead and the plane of the living at this point um that's the only sort of difference it's just basically this long ass trek that you have to take and it was just a a bit grating to say the least i mean i i, I have this problem in a couple other games too where if, it, if the stick has to be in a neutral position then i will end up accident, accidentally doing another one and then i would end up in cases where i would try to do a a headbutt and then i'd go into it like an uppercut and i would have already done, and i had already done an uppercut so i get that little like boink no, noise telling me that, that that i already did it and then i'd fall down and get hit like oh perfect just what i wanted yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah no but i mean there's just the, the combat is i think that one of the fun parts is really discovering um where like what skills you get and those quirky names you know you got your frog slams and you got your you know, what goat fly and goat climbs and goat jumps but just because they didn't want to use wall jumps and you know hands down <laughs> like the best name to move is dashing derp derp <laughs> I, lo I lost it when i learned that move i'm like oh this is this is amazing because they're too lazy to figure out names it, it, like, it's also kind of like a commentary but like yeah like all these have crazy names we don't want to make up another one, so here you go. I just I, I, I cracked up when I like once I got that move. Okay. Um, just obviously talking to the the fight scenes, something that uh, I found a bit overwhelming at times is the fact that when you have certain fight areas, they will basically fill the screen up with enemies for you to basically throw around. I mean, how do we find like the combat system? Because it sort of switches between manageable one two three enemies on the screen and then you have about 40 enemies at once to to face off against once yeah. i figured out how to grab and like and the fact that you had four besides the directional throw like if you grab an enemy and you just kind of hold on to him for a little bit he'll he'll throw him in a direction but but besides that there's four other moves that, that you can do that i didn't realize were there because the game doesn't really tell you about them 
But once I figured those out, it made it so much easier. Because you would just grab an enemy, do like the suplex or the or the DOS boot, and throw the enemies all over the place, and they would and they would hit them, and your combo would go up, and then you could, and then so that, and so you'd have room to land and start your combo all over again, and it it got really fun once it, like once I learned that. Yeah, and those those uh, those ones are the ones that you buy at uh, the save points, pretty much. Um, for a certain amount of coins that you gain for um, beating enemies. And I think that that mechanic is really good just because it kind of makes you um, want to fight all the enemies instead of just, you know, having the choice of running off. Yeah. I think certainly one of the changes that we saw with the Super Turbo uh, Championship Edition is the fact that we got the introduction of the Intenso mode, uh, which basically is like a rage meter. You, the more mm-hmm. enemies that you beat up, the more the meter fills up, and it gives you a short period where you become super powered. And you can just go around beating up enemies and with like with ease, and uh, where your where your health are obviously charges up. And yeah, it was. I think it certainly helps when you're being mobbed by enemies, especially because the game has no real sense of fairness or what should be considered a, a reasonable sort of enemy fight. It's just all about the spectacle, it seems, uh, throughout the game, just the, from the design. It's all what we do to make it as visually impacting for the player as possible. And certainly when you've got these little uh, gremlin creatures being dropped in, you've got a big giant skeleton, and you've got uh, like scared some warthog things like rolling at you, and it can get a bit chaotic on the screen. So the Intenso mode does help to obviously leave you... Uh, really some of the tension in those moments, because uh, otherwise I could see it becoming a little frustrating, to say the least. Did we have any moments that frustrated us with this game? I know that certainly with some of the jumps, uh, which required you to switch between different special moves, were a bit of a pain, um, as were the spike rolls, which uh, required you to do your forward roll through them. Um, I found those to be a pain, but does anyone else have any problems with like the platforming sections? and? I think the first one that comes to mind was I think the first part that really, really drove me up the wall. And I remembered messaging you, Elwood, and I was like, I'm beaten. I can't do this. I just, I just can't, you know? And it's, it's like a floor of spikes, and you need to dive through one, one spike and then perform three special moves in one shot and then hit a platform. And... I was just torn by that part. Like, I went from frustrated to angry, and then I just went full-on depressed. And then I had to stop, and I had to, like, take a breath and then just come back to it. But how did you feel once you beat that part? But as I said, like, when you beat it, it feels really good. You're like, oh, my God, this is done. I, like, a breath of relief, you know? That's why I like platformers so much, because they... Cause they well, any good one will integrate a really difficult section like that, and it'll just like, and like you said, just drive you up the wall, make you mad, and make you angry. You're like, God damn, I need to, fit, I, I can beat this. I know I can. But once you do, that moment of satisfaction is like, oh, this is amazing. I'm so glad that I beat that, and it makes you want to play it more. And so I, th- I thought this game did a really good job of doing that, of like really uh, progressing that like that difficulty pretty well, because because like you don't learn all the moves. Um, like at once, uh, like it's it's pretty well evenly spread out throughout the entire game, and so they slowly kind of make you incorporate the different moves in order to get through the different puzzles. Like having to do two or three of the special moves at the same time, or even going from like a goat jump or the goat uh, the flying goat dash thing, and and then canceling that, and then going into into something else. And and it, and it, it did a good job of also too not really telling you about some of those, but rather showing them. Like, one of the th- um, examples that I remember was, like, once you first learn the da- the flying goat dash, uh, like, there's a red block right above the thing. And so I, f- I flew by that, and I'm like, how do I get to that? Can I cancel this thing? And so I immediately turned around and flew back and did my upper cover right into it. And so from then on, I was like, oh, I can cancel this. And it, it opened up so much more uh, possibilities. Yeah, I can understand that. Um, certainly with the bosses in particular, there's some really 
difficult bosses. Um, I think it's like the second boss that you have to face, which is like um, this shape shifting sorceress, and basically she appears and she shoots out this uh, shoots out these objects whenever she appears, and you basically have to time it so that you're not just charging in and getting hit by these projectiles and so you avoid the projectiles and then you can just go to go in and maximize your combo hits on her um and i think i must have spent a good hour trying to get the reflexes in not to just like charge in each time to pace it and you know take your time to avoid the projectiles and and what to do to maximize those uh those hits and it, as you said it was a great sense of satisfaction when i beat that particular section um and it is kind of uh similar to when you play like ninja gaiden and you get past a particular brutal beat down section there or you you encounter a group of ninjas and you uh you manage to hit them all without them landing a blow on you it's a real it is a real sense of sense to the first satisfaction but at the same time when you're playing this game it doesn't feel that it's being designed to be intentionally difficult as possible. Um, there seems to be down some some sort of a good sense of balance there to obviously try and make the keep this game as impo- as uh, as fun as possible, and at the same time keep that challenge there. Um, and I think it's it's good to obviously, as you said, uh, come out these sections, especially the big mob. Uh, fights in uh, and to be the one left standing, so uh, it's always kind of a fun feeling for sure. But I, I think that that's the thing is you know, it we always talk about this is how games now tend to make these you know, cartoony, fun, and sometimes colorful, but colorful in the situation kind of like a rainbow of joy to play and to look at, and they're so attractive to look at, like. I don't know. They're so appealing to my eyeballs, you know? And then you're just like, then then they just toss you there and then they're like, oh, well, this is going to be really challenging now. You need to use your brain. <laughs> and yeah, no, but I think that this game is really good because of not only is it just platforming, but all, even like every single boss fight, everything takes some sort of strategy and some sort of patience and some sort of planning to really execute and to beat it. Um, I feel that that's a little less when you're it trapped in like a closed space and you're thrown with a thousand enemies. But um, I think that like it it still works really well. Although I do have to kind of disagree. I think that there is a gradual learning curve, but it isn't. It does get exponentially harder. It it definitely does. I mean, obviously, I have to ask with obviously with a colorful design. Um being so enjoyable i think do you think the fact that because so many games now they're so dark and moody and and uh kind of such a downer the fact that we've got a game that's like so colorful and bright that uh that that we appreciate it a lot more than if uh if we're obviously viewing this as as if it was like an older game say we're like viewing it on like one of the uh for like the for the nares or the mega drive or something uh were these this sort of color palette was more common do you think we would view it the same uh or do you think it's just the fact that modern game is just so dark and gloomy that we appreciate uh, a nice bright colorful uh, color palette more it, it definitely was a callback to like when uh, like as you were saying that the games kind of had that 16-bit or 32-bit uh color scheme and so they were bright and colorful and it was like well, really everything about the entire game was a callback but Playing something that wasn't so, I guess, dark as you mentioned, it just it, like it was a, it, like it did feel like a breath of fresh air. Yeah, I love the fact that uh, when you pick up special moves, you normally enter these rooms and you have to destroy a statue, which is a throwback to uh, Super Metroid. It's like yeah. uh, the dragon statue, and the fact that uh, your your sort of trainer um, basically has a go at you for destroying the statue, and it's like. It picks up on this like uh, idea that when you're in these old games, you just enter rooms to destroy everything. And he's like, "Why do you have to like enter the room and destroy the biggest thing that's in here?" Yeah, uh, I would I would have told you that how to do this if you did, even if you didn't destroy that. Yeah, yeah, that, that that was awesome. Yeah, because you're two main trainers in this. You have uh, your wise mentor, so Yoda sort of character who switches forms between being an old man and a goat uh, for no apparent reason, and you also have a wrestling chicken that uh will teach you moves as well so 
It's uh, certainly some unusual characters who, that you encounter along the way. Yeah, and, and I really like about those statues. So those were called Chuzo statues mm-hmm. instead of the Chozo of what it is in the Metroid games. I, I, that's awesome. Like there are so many references that if we want to talk about those now, we can or later. But yeah. I just I wrote them down as I went because there there's so many like that I found and they're just so awesome. Yeah. I mean, okay, I I it. Now? okay. So there was a Metroid right with that and kind of with the way that like what the exploration is. Um, and uh, Santa Luca or Lucida, like whatever this uh, the, the main city was, uh, the, the, there was a, 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 a Super Mario Brothers sign, like with the wrestlers. I don't know if you guys caught that. Um, at one at the end of one of the early levels, there there was an X at the end of a bridge, which was for like the Super Mario Brothers. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. the, the um, castle. Yeah, because uh, when you're being chased by the big dinosaur thing which again was just a real pain of a level to do <laughs> oh yeah, yeah but once you nailed it that was that was so great but yeah as soon as i saw that act it's like oh i saw what yeah. you were doing yeah it's pretty good but i think that was that was one of the main ones that i caught yeah nice um there was uh, it was it was a flaming head guy at one point like i think it was the first time that you've uh, 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 that you ran into him he goes sorry luchador your princess is in another castle which is another Mario <laughs> reference. Um, one that really surprised me was that there was a uh, a, a thing for L- the Legend of Zelda Two, which is kind of like the black sheep of the Zelda family of the, of the Zelda games, because uh, because inside that city again uh, there was a girl who was missing her brother, and saying that she was that he was always off and running in a, around in a green tunic and trying to stop a pig monster from being revived which is uh, which is the, uh, the plot for zelda 2 and then once you find him he says i am error which is a call back, another callback to, to zelda 2 of where um of, uh, there's a guy in the house who just who said i am error and then uh that's what, that, that was pretty funny um and, there's, uh, and then also with zelda there's a majora's mask uh, sign in the chicken dojo it was, it was like really small though, and you kind of had to, I guess, kind of really peek for it. And then, have any of you ever played Final Fantasy? Yeah. yeah. So, the cactus guys, I, I can't remember their mm-hmm. name right now, but there were statues of those guys uh, in the background of the desert. Oh. That felt pretty. <laughs> I was and too then, busy throwing the things back at the cactus to, to think about that. Yeah. And then, uh, there was a couple. Castle Crasher signs around the uh, that city, as well as a few um, Mega Man signs, uh, also in that city. And I'm sure there was many more, but those, but those were the only ones that, that I was able to catch. And I just I thought it was awesome that they tried to throw in all these um, references onto I'm sure what are some of their favorite games. Yeah, it's um, it's fun when you have those references. At the same time, they're not so imposing it, it takes away from the game the game itself has a lot of original ideas it just has it chooses to throw in these these weird little nods um you also have most random side quests as you go along like there's one where you have to uh organize these two different color crabs into separate pots and it's <laughs> sort of like oh you got to make sure you don't mix them up because in the middle of a turf war war uh, which i thought was kind of funny um but um yeah, I mean, Kim, did you have any particular very moments from this game at all, or anything you noted? Or were you just too busy enjoying beating things up? I probably really beat stuff up mostly, but um, I did do some quests, and I really just did. I didn't really do a whole lot of quests. I uh, do. You guys have any? <laughs> I, I found the first one by accident, but but there are six mas- mask pieces. That you have to find. Um, did you guys find any of those? Um, no. no. <laughs> I think I did. <laughs> so, 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 fun fact: there are actually two endings to this game. Uh, the first one is probably the other ones that that you found is, is a normal ending, and then there's what's called the real ending. And so, at the end, after you beat the final boss, you get that. P- so, if so, if you find all six of these mask pieces throughout the world it unlocks this other ending and but in order to find those pieces like the 
it has they're very well hidden uh, like throughout the entire map and the first one that I found uh, I found completely by accident it was in one of the blocks off of some side path randomly somewhere and it's actually the hardest one to find like it's like the sixth one you're supposed to find okay uh, and it's in order in order to get to it like the platforming it, it was much more difficult than anything else in the game and that's probably the most where I had to bang my head the most because actually when I found it I found it before I uh, before you, like you get the the uh, the flying uh, thing and which is like the very last thing in the game and so once I realized I need something else I came back to it and got it and then did and then I had to do some research but just finding those masks was probably one of my like the highlights of the game for me how about you Elwood what was highlights for you I think it was the the when when you get into the game and you start obviously upgrading uh your moves and, and costumes the costumes in particular i found that was one of my favorite aspects of this game because it's you can obviously go through and you can use your standard um uh, your standard lucha mask costume uh but there's the option to wrestle in a chicken suit which uh was pretty fun i mean i only managed to get the one ending i didn't there was so many sections in this game where you would have these insane puzzle sections and i think i just had PTSD back to Super Meat Boy again. I was like, no, I, I'm not. <laughs> it's not going to happen today. Um, if I didn't get it the first few or four times, then it was all like, no, it's it's not going to happen again. And I I did uh, wonder what was going on when you get, when you get turned into the chicken around the halfway point because you have this long section where you have to run around as the chicken and it it adds you fight to enemies. But you only way you can find them is by pecking them, and it takes so long to wear down these enemies. <laughs> and on top of that, it, there was one section that it was just like a tiny space with a grinding little mechanism thing, and it was just like armadillos flying at you, and you're just like, oh my god, I have to dodge these things. Yeah. <laughs> what made that worse is that in chicken form, you, you don't have your dive roll, and so you have to pure like legit dodge it yeah it's strange you say you have to dodge it because i just stay on the left side of the screen and and just sort of weighed it out and they just pretty much uh i it allows you to avoid most of the damage but you occasionally take the uh one or two hits but not enough to obviously kill you before that section's over so um i think obviously the the intention was that you would uh you would avoid them not just stand there like a lemon like i did so <laughs> hey if it works um yeah if it, if it works then all the better really but i think um if anything this game felt like a real throwback we're drawing a modern comparison uh the game it felt most like a throwback to would be like song of the deep which we reviewed last year and i was so relieved the fact that we weren't just going into building tower sections the fact that the game manages to keep things fun and fresh throughout i mean it's only a short little game i mean this takes you about eight hours to finish um and it was so good the fact that that i never got the feeling of oh my god when is this game gonna end it it uh it was all wrapped up if anything i wish this game was longer i was enjoying myself so much throughout the game um and just how playable it was i actually wanted it to last a lot longer than it did and uh it never really gets you grinds you down to the fact that like oh i've got to do another chicken segment oh i've got to go and <laughs> find another five or six things you can pretty much take a straight path through it you don't have to do side quests um the side quests if anything just had a little more color to the what is only a colorful world um and the fact that you can switch between the two planes you can switch between the land of the living and the land of the dead and if you switch into the land of the dead there's certain sections where they're having like a dare the dead festival um <laughs> and if you switch to the land of the living you go through just these same towns they're just like complete smoldering uh ruins so it's uh it's fun the fact that the game manages to constantly switch things up and uh not just feel like oh i'm just going back and forth with like the same sections it's constantly trying to have you approach each section where if it through like the different planes or being able to access different areas because you now have different abilities so it um it, it seems to be constantly mixing up about uh any form of like overly rep repetitive behavior um 
But uh, yeah, true. I mean, did you have any sort of major issues with this game? Anything you didn't like about it? Uh, yeah, there was one thing that I wasn't ecstatic about, I guess. But it's funny that you mentioned about the uh, about the costumes because I also like that a lot. But there wasn't enough silver throughout the game to kind of get all of them. So you kind of had to really pick and choose which ones you wanted and kind of plan ahead. Like, I think I only ended up buying three. Um, I was expecting to be able to try out all of them, but you had to plan ahead and kind of, like, ration your silver almost to, f- to figure out which, which ones you want. Yeah. And so, I only, I, and so, like, I only ended up buying two or three of them. Uh, no, uh, three. Uh, and I was kind of hoping to try all of them, but I couldn't because... There's not enough, enough silver for that. I know what you mean. I think I, I made the mistake. I've, myself, I was, as soon as I saw the check-in costume, that was all I wanted. Um, <laughs> that, Honest, honestly, that was my favorite one. Yeah. Like, hands down, that's the best one in the game. Probably, so, and it just, it, because the fact that, that you could heal over time was huge. And it's the first one that you can buy. It's awesome. Yeah. And for myself, mm-hmm. I think that's the problem. All the gold and the rainbow and the rainbow for myself was just for that checking costume. As soon as I got that, that was, I was like set. Um, and I kind of wish that if I go back in it, I may like try some of the different costumes. Like I might, I wanted to try playing as the female Lucha Libra character that you can obviously switch to mm-hmm. um, instead mm-hmm. of just playing a male character because you know, it's always fun to play as female characters in games because obviously this is an industry dominated by male characters, so it's always fun to. Play it, and uh, she's also got a really cool costume. She's got a really great outfit. Mm-hmm. Well, with her, actually, if you unlocked one, like 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 if you unlocked the chicken for the for the male, you got hers too. Oh, awesome! Yeah, mm-hmm. so actually, like there were a few times where I did kind of go over to her just to kind of see how she looked differently, like when she played. And it's like 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 the uppercut for her was a like kick, and and, then, and like small changes like that was really kind of fun to see. I don't know. I guess I felt a little different, and I, I can't really say if it's the game's fault or the fact that I'm not used to the controller or just whatnot, but I felt like some of the controls were not very responsive. Like, you were saying you had an issue with, like, the headbutt, and for me, it was it was um, the uppercut. I could not do the uppercut to save my life, you know? Like, every time I needed it, I would cry like i'd be i'd get so frustrated and i'd die and over and over and over again like you were like this game's eight hours i think it's like 15 hours for me so (laughs) almost double just because of how bad i am (laughs) as like just just i don't know combats and combos and this sort of thing like metroidvania games always kind of get me a little yeah well at least this game gives you the option to play with with uh, up to three other friends. I know. I think that's really, really cool. Um, if only I had friends to play with. I'm about to say, <laughs> we unfortunately during this playthrough we didn't get to uh, do much of the multiplayer because we didn't have three other friends to play it with. But um, well, I, think, I don't think good. it helped either. I think we all played it on a different system. Uh, I don't know. We we played it on Steam. So. Oh, both of you did. Oh, okay. Well, was, never mind. Then it was just me. <laughs> <laughs> But um, yeah, if you can if you can find another free friends to play it with, it, it's great to have another multiplayer game, especially a throwback game like this to play to play because it's kind of like Castle Crashers or like the new Super Mario Brothers. The fact that if you can have uh, multiple pe- multiple friends playing and such a, a pick up and play game like this, like this, it's just really really fun because a, a lot of people get very. If they're not gamers, they get a little daunted by playing modern games because they just don't tend to have that pick and play. And you've got to take the time to learn controls, which a lot of people, especially non-gamers, aren't particularly overly keen on. But this, you can just pick up and play. So the fact that uh, it obviously has the option there for multiplayer is uh, it's certainly a, a positive. I, I don't know if I want to go on a limb and say this is my currently my favorite game that we played this year. Um, certainly, since we've started doing since we started doing these reviews i think this is probably the most fun game that we've had which is this better than oxen free i i'm at the moment i'm undecided whether i i like this more than oxen free which is obviously our game of the year last year um 
it's certainly a, a contender for this year's of of my game of the year. I'm, this is just so much fun. Uh, if anything, I want I just want more now. I want a, a follow up to this. I want super. I would just want a Guacamole two uh, to come out and and hopefully uh, give us a bit longer. Maybe go for continue that sort of throwback to the other Metroidvania games and aim to clock in around the fifteen twenty hour mark rather than this sort of enjoyable yet too short especially when a game is this fun uh five to five to seven hour mark that we obviously have here so i I think the game is great um it's it is very colorful it's definitely a change of pace for us um definitely not better than oxen free mostly because i do like horror games a lot more um and i think that oxen free had um a lot of things that appealed to me a lot more uh and the impact it had on me was much more than that as well um like, this is a fun game to jump into, and it really makes you want to keep playing, no matter how hard it is and no matter how challenging it is. And that's coming from me, who has really low patience and horrible gaming skills and platforming skills, and I wish I was a better gamer sometimes because of this game. Um, but, I mean, I definitely felt a sense of achievement, and that's really important, is that you really want to see where the story is going as well. Um, so you really wanted to get to the ending and that didn't matter if it meant fighting a boss for an hour or five hours, you know, it just really, it just really like mattered that, you know, you were going to finish it. And I think that's a huge, comp- a, like a huge accomplishment. So ratings for, for Guacamole Super Turbo Championship Edition. First off, uh, Drew, what are you going to rate this one out of five? Out of five. So... I'm debating on whether it would be a four or five, because I, I enjoyed the hell out you of this game. You can go point five. You can go four point five. Yeah, that's, that's kind of that's kind of what I'm thinking. So I'm probably gonna give it four point five. Luchador masks. Nice. <laughs> Kim, what are you gonna give it out five? Um, I'm gonna go with a four. Okay. Um, as for myself, I'm going to give it. Uh, I'm going to just go all out. I'm going to say this is absolutely perfect. It's going to get five, uh, five Luchador masks for myself. Uh, this was just so much fun. I don't, it's been a, a while since I had so much fun, uh, with a game. And, uh, yeah, I don't know whether this is just a, due to the fact that everything I've been playing has been so dark recently and this fact that this was so light and fun. Um, helped at all but uh no this is uh this is a fantastic game it's well worth picking up um it is available obviously for both xbox and playstation and you can pick it up on steam as well um if you do have a vita you can also pick it up there and i think for the vita especially this is just the most perfect game you can have because it's so easy to pick up and play um it's the sort of thing that uh, be be great just to uh have if you're waiting for a bus or stuck in the doctor's office or wherever you happen to be playing your Vita. Um, this is sort of like the perfect sort of game that you want for that. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I, I've never played a Vita, but I'm pretty sure like this works really how, where, well with like a handheld, I think. It probably would help the responsiveness of it. Um, but yeah, so for the sake of time, uh, for Drew, uh, where do you, like, where would people find you? Uh, you can find me at my website, Drew's Movie Reviews, at uh, DrewReviewMovies.wordpress.com. Thanks for joining us for this review of Guacamelee and, of course, uh, suggesting it to us. Uh, it was a hit for both of us and for probably the three of us at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, thanks for having me. It's a lot of fun. That's great. Um, so this wraps up this episode. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please like, share, and subscribe. We'd love to hear your feedback and any recommendations. Head over to our home base, thatmomentin.com, to read more gaming reviews. To get gaming news and releases every single day, follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook, at Game Warp Podcast. And also hang out with us on our new Twitch channel, where we stream at Game Warp Podcast. Finally, to catch our episode on the go, you can find us on iTunes and Podomatic. Until next time, bye.